Well, howdy y'all, this is Jason Legato with the Dark Crystal Conjunction, your YouTube space to nerd out about all things the Dark Crystal. A lot of you have been asking about, you know, some of the pops and t-shirts I wear that show up in the background of other videos I do. And we also got two new books yesterday, that is November 12th yesterday. I did a video uh, un unboxing this, but my camera was set in portrait and it looked horrible. So I'm just going to redo this again and hopefully shorter this time. So some of the, the two new books we got was Dark Crystal Age of Resistance, Heroes of the Resistance by J.M. Lee. And we got the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance, Agra's Wisdom of Thra by J.M. Lee as well, illustrated by Corey Godby. And for those of you who don't know, J.M. Lee was one of the writers on the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance, the Netflix show. He was also, they consulted him regarding uh, the canon and things that they had done. He had also wrote a tetralogy, so four books, young adult, uh, that are parallel with the story. So they pulled a lot of material from him, uh, really great stuff. So let's look through each of these quickly. Um, so this is a hardcover. It is very good quality, published on Penguin. As you can see, it's not very big, and the blurb reads in the back. Heroes of the Resistance. A rebellion is rising, and it's you, young Gelfling, who can help answer the call of the crystal. Welcome to the Resistance. This book will be your guide to Thra. Learn of your fellow Gelfling throughout the Seven Clans, and resist the threat of darkness from the cruel Skeksis. You're here because you listen to the crystal's call, and the Resistance needs the help of Gelfling heroes everywhere. This book was uh, MRS $9, US dollars of course. Again, very nice. There's no, it didn't come with any jacket. Got some nice Freudian art here in the background. That's pretty much how every page looks. There's not very much variety on it. Like that's just the standard background on all of these. Again, here is your table of contents. This gives you basic information about each hero. If you saw the show, it doesn't really give you anything new that I noticed. Maybe some names of creatures or characters. But there wasn't any like new big facts that I learned. I think this is a better book for uh, kids who love the show and kind of just want a book like this. I know when I was young and there was a movie I liked, books like this I loved. So it does have a nice little intro from the words of Mother Agra, kind of telling you like the basic plot of what's happening. And it's really up to you to know who your friends and the heroes are and who the enemies are. And therefore, so that you could be a hero of the resistance as well. Um, therefore, you should know these characters. And so that's pretty much what it does. So here you can see Rion. Tells you his goal, the clan he's from, his hometown again. All stuff you kind of already know if you saw the show and look into the lore like I do a lot. Uh, but, you know, story. Rion was a guard of the castle of the crystal where he served with Skeksis Lord along with the other Gelfling guards. It goes on and on. You know, he dealt with the Silk Spitters. Uh, knowing he had to warn the other Gelfling, the Skeksis' awful treachery, so forth and so on. Uh, Ordon gives you his personality, which again, you can deduce from the show. Description of him and all that. It gives you little little snippets of information about the vial of, eth of essence. After witnessing the Skeksis' essence draining machinery in action, we install a vial of, of essence in the hopes that it might be proof enough to convince the other Gelfling that he is telling the truth. So it doesn't really give you any spoilers or tell you how it ends and whatnot. It's kind of just a lot of the setup. You know, a lot of the stuff you saw in the first couple of episodes. So uh, it is a good quality book. As you can tell, these, these pages are all glossy. These are all full color, very bright, very um, beautiful pictures. You know, there, there weren't any new pictures in here. All of these pictures were from the movie itself. There wasn't like any behind the scene pictures or different pictures and whatnot. But... You know, info about the darkening, what dream fasting is. Again, nothing, nothing kind of completely brand new. They had come from somewhere, didn't they? These three heroes. We all come from somewhere, and we are going somewhere too. Guffling friends and family. So it just has it split up like it showed. Uh, Mira Rip. Gurgen. Just Gurgen. There's Ordon. He's a beast, and I'm loving him more and more, especially seeing him in the prequel comics, which I'll talk about separately. Generic castle guard type dudes. Here's some more context about those surrounding Brea. Got Celadon, everyone's favorite goth overlord. Tavra, 
I wish I had her full name in here, like Katabra. Uh, I don't think it gives you that information, so. I've also read the books too, so I guess that's why I have a lot of the other information as well. Uh, Tabra is one of my favorite characters. Um, she gets a little time in the show, which is fine. You know, there was other things they needed to show. See, so like this thing on lore, I was like, oh, cool. Give me some more information about lore. Okay, well, origin unknown. Lore slept for hundreds of trying, buried beneath the all Madras throne room. He is a timeless stone messenger characterized by the ability to withstand the elements of nature. Or his tireless patience makes him ideal for delivering important messages over long distances of both geography and time. See, so these are all things you can kind of just deduce from just watching the show. A secret message was stored inside Lore's ancient body, and that message was finally released by Brea when she discovered the secret chamber where Lore waited. Who left this message and what does it mean? Brea can only hope she will be able to find out. See, like I was saying, it kind of gives you all the information up to episode, you know, four or five six or so, doesn't really reveal the rest. You know, so all of Deet's family's name, Lathan, Mittenjan, and Bobbin. You know, I think we only heard Bobbin's name, as far as I know. Deet's father is Lathan and Mittenjan, live in Domrock, along with Deet's bro baby brother, Bobbin. They taught Deet everything they know about tending to the Nurlocks that live in the Groton Caves. They also taught her everything they know about the world that exists outside the caves, which unfortunately is very little. Saying goodbye to Deet, and sending her out to the caves and into the bright world outside was no easy task. Again, oh, there was a little information that, you know, they taught her some stuff, but not really that much. You know, it only tells you about the one tree. There's other trees as well, but you don't get any of that. You know, nothing really new. Again, you kind of freeze frame these if you want and see them. But it's a very pretty book. You know, for what it is, it's, it's well written. I don't have any complaints about that yeah this little guy's name is Pluffum uh, super adorable super adorable nothing really you know if you if you were coming to this to like find out the background and the lore and really explore Thraw a lot more you know not really gonna get that but I kind of expected that for, based on the size of this book and the way some of the previews had already looked so I know some people were disappointed, some people are happy with it, and that's totally cool. It's, it is what I expected, so I'm just, I'm glad for it. And I, uh, I love her, especially in the books. Man, she is such a beast. Her character arc is incredible in the books. Uh, and Kylan as well, Kylan. Oh, Song of the Dark Crystal? This guy is the man, or the Gelfling. Gelfling funerals. There are many rituals the Gelfling perform for their dead. But every clan's tradition includes burial. In this way, the Gelfling are returned to Thra. Kylan is well versed in many of these Gelfling rituals, including those of Gelfling long past that were preserved through song. Yes, yeah, so it does give you a little info. Like Kylan is the hero of the Dark Crystal young adult tie-in novel, Song of the Dark Crystal. So that's cool that it gives this book, which is more you know, general information. Like, hey, you want to know more? He's one of the main characters in this other stuff. So. There you go, it's going to give us information about Seven Gelfling Clans and the Madras. Again, um, nothing really new. Again, Nameless Freckles the Paladin, nicknamed, but what is his true name? We may never know. That dashingly handsome Gelfling there. And then there is Madrafera. She is great too. I really love her in the comics as well. Uh, she's got spunk. She's got Spunk Kid. Yep, all your other Madras there. So see, just general information. The book feels great in the hand. It's all nice, you know. Hope I don't sound like I'm complaining. But if you're looking for something a little deeper, well, you might want to go by the Tetralogy. There's the Skeksis information. It's a lot of summary from the movie when you read it. <laughs> yep, just beautiful pictures though. Beautiful layout and design. Definitely no complaints about all of that. There it is. There's a lot of really great background information about Skekmal the Hunter in the books as well. Uh, I kind of want to make a video about that, just the legend that he was and the songs and poems and whatnot that were written about him. And people kind of believe that he was like the Chupacabra, like he wasn't real. He was just like this legendary thing to 
scare Gelfling children to make sure they didn't sneak out at night and whatnot. So here's our uh, druggy duo there. Well, I mean there, Ergo the Wanderer, rather. And there you go. See, this this picture looks new. I don't remember this. Some podlings even have honor have the honor of working with Agra. No matter where, where one visits in Thra, one will always find podlings. They live close to the earth, both literally and figuratively. Their culture is typically warm and welcoming, and they often live in close proximity to Gelfling, trading in produce and fine crafts. Although the podlings speak their own language, many have also learned to speak Gelfling in order to better draw their two races closer together. So, there you go. Just, you know, there is a tiny bit of information that, like, oh, they trade and do things like that. And if you've seen creation myths, you get some of that as well. One of the most ancient ranches of Thrall. Oh, Tavra. Mm. Don't even get me started on the spider issue with her. Oh, I love her. I really love Tavra. A little bit of information on the Grunax. These pitiful creatures were mostly eradicated, many trying to go. Some survived, and two were later captured by the Chamberlain to assist Skektek the scientist in his lab. Yada, yada, yada. So, see, more than two of them are alive. People be doubting. Plenty of material to make more Aratham. Or more... Oh, man, my... my, my Grunax, Aratham, uh... Gartham, e. Can I not remember that name? More Garth, more Gartham. There's that Unimos, Wind Sifters. Yeah, blah blah blah. The people period are very low. Blah, 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 blah. Cool. So there you go. Outro by her. And so the flames of hope burn, the fires of resistance, the guffling rise, and the Skeksis tremble like a thousand stars in the dark sky, all bending across the cosmos to one point, to one day of reckoning, to the great conjunction. Here is a Thra. This is your legacy. Very cool. So, there you go. I do think that would make a nice gift book for any kiddo in your life that really loved the series and wants to kind of dive in more, but, you know, may not be ready for the books and whatnot that have a little more... Um, are going to be a little heavier. This is a perfect companion for that. Let's now look at the Dark Crystal Augur's Wisdom of Thrawn. Now this has been touted as kind of a gift book and whatnot, and it definitely lives up to that. So this has a nice, again, this is little 6.8 inches by 6.8 inches and whatnot. Nice little square gift book. $12.99. Lost? Well, you are where you are. And it really just has quotes like that. Uh, the big draw for me on this was the artwork by Corey Godby. He did Tales for the Dark Crystal, or Dark Crystal Tales, rather. He also did one for Labyrinth. And um, I really love his full-page color illustrations. Here's a little blurb. The world of Thra is filled with questions and uncertainty. Who better than the seemingly all-knowing Agra to offer wisdom to offer words of wisdom on some of its many mysteries. I'm very glad they said seemingly all-knowing because it really drives me crazy when those earlier blurbs were like, she knows everything, she's omniscient, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, she's kind of kooky, actually. Agra's Wisdom of Thra. So again, I did hear an interview with Jan Lee about this, and this, uh, you know, kind of made some quotes about Agra, put them in there in its full color. So this is basically how every layout is. It's artwork from Corey Godby, who I do love his artwork. Here you have the Wall of Destiny. And then a nice little pithy quote like, There is much to know in this world, and even more to not know. So again, there's there's nothing really... It's like some of the other random things Agra says in the movie. It's kind of silly and goofy. You know, if the rock runs, runs away from you, chase it. Great picture of a fizz gig there. But if it moves not, we'll leave it alone. So, you know, nothing, nothing amazing. Again, this is more meant for gift book style giving. So you might want to give this to the Dark Crystal fan in your life. Uh, the illustrations are beautiful. Look at that. Wandering Gelfling. Oh, so good. Really love his artwork. Again, beautiful colors there. In, in this book, I really noticed that he really got better, I want to say. Not to say that he was ever bad at it, but... His stuff looks like it's more glowing. Like that moon looks like it's glowing. Or the sister moons, rather, I should say. And oh, I mean, he just has beautiful colors in this. I wish I had better lighting to do some more justice. 
Yeah, so again, you know, kind of typical movie quotes you got there. There's a podling eating a slug. Yep, once you've eaten it halfway, might as well go all the way. Never ask what's in the cauldron. I believe this is his only Skeksis drawing in this. Uh, but it sure is great. Again, really love his use of colors and whatnot. And this, look at this. This is one of my favorite ones. This just landscape of Thra. Some of the Uru walking. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. He's a, he's a wonderful fantasy artist. One of my favorites. Again, look at, look at, the, look at this glow here from Augur's Observatory, like one of the one of the Sons of Thra setting, probably the Greater Sun, and the Rose Sun maybe up here. So you get just these beautiful colors. I'm just, look at that pop. Wonderful. It's an Urskek, Uru and Skeksis there. Very nice, look at this. Great stuff, such great art. And begin all the same. So again, cool layout design, you know, little pithy quotes, you know, nothing, it's not, you know, if you're coming to it thinking it's going to be like uh, some quotes that are going to change your life. No, this is just kind of the goofier side of Mother Agra, I guess. Again, look at that that lighting. He's really gotten it so good at lighting. So good job on that. And beautiful and beautiful. Beautiful. But that's it. I mean, there's really not that much to it. Actually, I got this on Amazon for $9.99. There's a info about the author J.M. Lee there and Corey Godby artist definitely check out all their stuff highly recommend it again it's it's a little gift book you can get on amazon 10 bucks nice nice hardcover has a sleeve let's see what it's covering oh, same thing so no hidden artwork or maps or anything like that just plain typical nice now the other book was a, a glossy finish this is more of a matte finish on the pages they are thicker pages than your typical book you know it's you know, more construction paper type, but a nicer quality, thickness and whatnot. So that's that book. Not much to it. That is what it is. It's a great little gift for any Dark Crystal fan in your life, I think. Um, but again, if you're looking for deep lore, deep insight, it's, you know, that's not what the book's for. So, well, with that, I am still waiting on getting the Epic Return of Thrall, the behind the scenes of the Age of Resistance. That isn't coming in for me till tomorrow, so I'm definitely going to be diving into that one. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. So until next time, keep exploring the world.